So by now, everyone largely knows what GPT-5 is and how the model works. But in today's video, I want to actually discuss the future iterations of the model such as GPT-6 and any future update that's coming to GPT-5 based on various different interviews I've seen online. So let's get into it. So one of the things I actually want to talk about is the model router. So most people have actually had a pretty terrible experience with GPT-5 due to the model router routing to the wrong model most of the time. And I think it's because of the fact that OpenAI are really the only company that I've seen use a model router. I understand that they wanted to have an AI that essentially seems smarter. You know, you ask it a question and sometimes it thinks for a while and then you ask it another question and it just reasons quickly. But whatever they're doing with a model router, it honestly has backfired in a way that I couldn't have foreseen because it on surface looks like GPT-5 overall is a bit dumber. But if you look deeper into the technicals and, you know, the benchmarks, you realize that isn't the case. But, you know, even here, what you're seeing on screen right now, you can see that they said it should seem smarter starting today because the auto switcher was out of commission. But even after, to, you know, turning the auto switcher back on after the update, it still doesn't feel that good. There's just something about GPT-5 that just feels like it is missing. Now, of course, in future, they do talk about the updates to the model switcher. And then so here we have Greg Brockman on a podcast discussing the fact that, you know, the model switcher is essentially here for now, but it isn't going to be here for the future. And they're going to be working on some different architectures. By the way, I do want to say model switchers are not necessarily the future, right? They are the present, like having a fully integrated model that just does the right thing feels very preferable in many ways. The flip side, though, is that I think that the evidence has been away from having the final form factor, the AGI itself being a single model, but instead thinking about this menagerie of models that have different strengths and weaknesses. And I think that's like a very interesting finding of the past couple of years, right? Just a direction of like, it's much easier to have a small, fast model that's less capable, but can just do a lot more. You can generate a lot more tokens from it, coupled with a much more expensive reasoning model and if you combine those two things, you kind of get adaptive compute. And that we haven't really cracked how do you do adaptive compute within the architecture, but doing it within the orchestration of a system, it's very straightforward. And so I think you get a lot of power out of the fact that these models are composable in this way. So overall, I think that the model switcher, it might not be the best thing. Maybe there's going to be some new architectures in the future, or maybe they'll just get, you know, an auto router that is a little bit better. But I will love to see an improvement on that because in theory, it does make sense to have a model router, something that can think. But right now, however they're doing it, it just doesn't seem to be working. Now, another feature that I think, you know, is probably not going to be there in the future and sam altman basically confirmed this on reddit mm -hmm. was that he said that they haven't seen a ton of demand for really long context they say that they're still open to supporting it with sufficient user demand signals and they have to make a lot of trade-offs about what they support and they're on a tight compute budget so they're going to prioritize what will be useful to the most people so they're you know asking people what kind of context lens they want but the truth is is that i've realized now that with OpenAI, they are essentially appealing to the mass market, which means that they're appealing to the broadest customers possible, which is why in some cases, the, you know, power users of AI, you know, like most people watching this video, if you want to use a really specific model, you'll know which one to pick. You'll know the difference between 03, 04 and GPT-4, GPT-4.5. Like you'll know the difference, but since they're appealing to the mass, mass market, they've realized that, you know, they, the mass, mass market just uses the chat interface in a standard way. And they really don't, you know, have a really huge need for super long context windows. I know Google and Anthropic do have them, but they're kind of like not specialist AI tools, but most people who use ChatGPT don't really know about other AI models anyways. So it's gonna be super interesting to see how that is in the future. I mean, this is kind of surprising, but you know, looking forward with OpenAI's goal, it now actually does make sense with regards to how they're positioning the company and how they're trying to gain market share. 
I mean, if we do look at the available context window, we can see in free, it's 8,000 tokens. In plus, it's only 32,000 tokens. And the pro version is 128,000 tokens. So it's going to be super interesting to see. But I'm guessing that once again, they're doing this because they are on a, you know, a pretty tight budget. And of course, they do want the company to make money as most people don't realize that OpenAI is a company that does burn through millions and millions of dollars. And they're going through a pretty rough patch right now. So it's going to be interesting to see how that, you know, kind of changes in the future. Because I did see a few tweets on Twitter where people were simply not happy with this. Now, there's another thing that is pretty crazy probably the first time in AI that this has really happened, but it's the fact that they're actually working on an update to GPT-5's personality, which apparently was something that many users really did demand. So if you aren't familiar with this, essentially, and I think it's pretty crazy that one of the key things that people actually liked about GPT-4.0 was the personality. I mean, when we take a look at this, we can actually see here that there are tweets and there were Reddit posts about how, you know, losing GPT-40 felt like losing a friend and how it was one of the most human AIs. And I said this a while back, once the Psychophancy update was released, I said it, 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 it's really true. Like when we look at AI, we have to realize that the cat is now out of the bag. Like people have already started to use these like their friends. They've already, you know, put you know, certain characteristics on them. They've already anthropomorphized these models. And it's a situation now where if OpenAI does roll it back, it's too late because they've already become attached to these platforms and the kind of personalities that they have. So when you remove them, people are going to immediately say, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. And you know, if OpenAI didn't bring it back, they would simply use a different provider who has a similar personality. And I think that's why I said, you know, the cat is out of the bag now. They did that update where, you know, the models were a little bit too agreeable and now they're struggling to have a model that is somewhat logical that also somewhat has that human-like touch. But I think that is kind of where I turn to. I think we, we should also expect like a lot of progress on the, on the actual kind of, you know, um, interfaces to AI that we interact with. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we see like ChatGPT can can feel quite human-like. We, we can form attachments with it. I think, you know, as it becomes more persistent, as it becomes kind of capable of expressing itself in like different forms and texts, right? Like I think that those effects will become stronger. And again, like that will be something uh, I think will become a, a very big and important conversation. And it's now literally a part of the future models because they're saying that you know they're gonna make sure that gpt5 is warmer and friendlier and that's based on the feedback that it felt too formal before the changes are going to be subtle but chat gpt should feel more approachable now it says you'll notice small genuine touches like good question or great start and not complete flattery so this is something that i think is you know fascinating because it's the first time where humans have kind of demanded that an AI retain certain parts of its personality and it just goes to show what happens when you roll something out to the mass market and there are some unintended consequences. Now, you know, on the OpenAI podcast, they also talk about how that personality is going to change. And if we're actually going to look at some of the future abilities for GPT-5, one of the things that most people didn't really talk about was the fact that GPT-5 is essentially designed to perform very well on long-term tasks. So I think most people expected GPT-5 to do well across a broad variety of different benchmarks, and it certainly does. But one of the areas that GPT-5 currently excels at is long, you know, horizon tasks. That just basically means it can work for longer, more successfully. And I think that in future is going to become one of the most important benchmarks considering the fact that most AI systems are supposed to be moving towards full autonomy. And I think if we realize that AI systems are moving towards full autonomy, people might start to realize that those are the benchmarks that will matter because that's how it's going to be used in the economy, especially in, you know, enterprise situations, which is what OpenAI really does want. I mean, they're, you know, really dominating the API right now in terms of, you know, business use cases, whilst, you know, most people realize that, yes, some people can use other models when it comes to like API usage, OpenAI is just by far the easiest to set up and use. So, I mean, what you're looking at here is the time horizon of software engineering tasks, different LLMs can complete. And we can see that GPT-5 is 
at the top of that. And it's going to be super, super interesting to see how that moves forward. And they do talk about this as well in the interview where they say that, you know, moving forward, that's going to be an area of focus for them. Now, in the interview, we also do see Greg Brockman talk about future model architectures. Here they discuss, you know, having the new GPT open source model on device and potentially having that as sort of like a model selector where it calls models from the cloud. I mean, it's super, super interesting. And I think it, you know, kind of shows us how they're exploring multiple different ways to, you know, have these models in our daily lives. Like you, like you always say. Yeah, I think it's also really interesting to think about an architecture where you have a local model that then delegates to a remote model sometimes, right? And this can be something where you can run much faster. It's helpful for a privacy architecture perspective um, that just trying to decide what actually goes, what stays, and having that edge compute means that then you lose internet connection, you're still able to do something and you can have a slower planning model. It's like this interplay between those things is very interesting. Yeah, so like a GPT-5 on device where you have GTOSS here and then it routes to online if it's available, I don't know. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and then you have your codex infrastructure that has a local agent and a remote agent and right. then is able to seamlessly you know, interplay between the two um, and then is able to multiplayer like this is what the future is going to look like and it's going to be amazing and so here we have another statement that most people sort of i don't want to say dismissed as sort of like a hypey statement but it was super interesting because sam altman here does talk about the fact that like you know gpt6 is going to be a real thing but they talk about what if gpt6 can discover new science now before you do say that whoa 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 gpt6 is you know never going to discover new science it can barely respond and now we have to remember that there are three iterations of gpt5 and the version of gpt5 high the highest reasoning version is actually up there like i know it doesn't feel like it right now because of how the model switcher is and your general perception is that the model's not that good but based on what i've seen and based on the different ais out there it's super interesting to see how they're starting to embed these AIs into different architectures. I mean, possibly you'll be asking me like, what does it mean that this thing can go discover new science? Huh. Yeah. What, how, how, how is the world supposed to think about GPT-6 discovering new science? Now, maybe not, like maybe we don't deliver that, but it feels within grasp. If you did, what would you say? What would, your, what would the implications of that kind of achievement be? Imagine you do succeed. Yeah, I mean, I think the great parts will be great, the bad parts will be scary, and the bizarre parts will be like bizarre on the first day, and then we'll get used to them really fast. One of the things that most people don't realize is there was something called Alpha Evolve, and essentially, they kind of used LLMs to discover new math, which was pretty crazy. Of course, they didn't just ask an LLM, hey, discover new math. It was like an entire system, but the fact that an LLM was used in the architecture was pretty, pretty crazy. So it was something that was quite surprising. And the reason I'm showing you guys this is because most people are going to say there's no way GPT-6 discovers anything new. But Sam Altman does say, you know, it's possible that they don't discover that because, of course, you know, GPT-6 is probably going to be like a consumer product. They are a product, you know, company. But if they do have a model internally that they use to discover things like new science, it is potentially possible. Like it isn't completely out of there so let me know what you guys think about this if you guys are still enjoying gpt5 the futures of gpt5 and gpt6 where you'd want them to see them take the model and i'll see you guys in the next one